is split. Uh oh. Could you hold my shaft, Alex? Good. Yeah, that was the yeah. other one. Go team. Welcome back to our Giving Back series sponsored by our friends Gion, where we pick up and fix up cars that belong to you, our deserving subscribers who have been through bad times. Last week, we transformed Daniel's 330 Club Sport after hearing that it belonged to his late father. And as you can see, getting the car back in OEM plus condition meant the world to him. This week, we're back for another transformation episode, albeit one that's been hidden from the owner so that we can surprise him later on. So you joined me somewhere in the Peak District, a uh, random car park. The reason that Jack and I are here and that we've driven up from London three hours is because we're meeting a man called Phil who is bringing a very special car on the back of his trailer, a car that belongs to his dad. Uh, we're going to find out what car that is and Phil's dad's story very soon. But for now, the light is fading, so um, yeah, hopefully we can get the car as quickly as possible, put it on our trailer and then take it down to the garage. A few minutes later and Phil arrives with 90s Japanese Nirvana, otherwise known as the mighty Toyota Celica GT4. So let's find out the story behind the car. Hi, my name's Phil Askew and this is my dad's Toyota Celica GT4. So about 22 years ago, my mum was diagnosed with cancer and uh, it just totally turned all of family life upside down. He thinks she had six rounds of chemotherapy, loads of different operations. And within that, my dad just had to kind of step up to the plate to could support my mum, look after and provide care. He never really grumbled about it, he just got on and really just gave us a perfect example to me and my brothers of like what a good dad is. After my mum passed away with cancer, uh, he kind of decided that he was going to try and focus in life on uh, not what he couldn't do anymore because he'd lost his wife, but maybe thinking more about what he could do. So he kind of looked at some project cars and the uh, Celica came along. Unfortunately then, my granddad had a combination of a stroke and then got Covid straight after that. Um, so my dad then had to move up to living with him to be his primary carer. So with a very short gap from being a full carer for my, for my mum, he then has now ended up being full carer um, for my granddad as well. So just doesn't get the time. He's loved cars. Back from when he was a young lad, having Mark 1 Escorts, RS 1600s, RS 2000s, Mexicos and uh, little minis and stuff like that, just has always been into his cars. My dad's somebody who, with a drop of a hat, help anybody. And I think this is a chance from, from a dad to receive something back, some of that like generosity, and then he can continue on with any other bits and pieces that need done, but just to get it to the point where he can take it out on the road, take it for drives and enjoy using it would be, would be that would be amazing to see. So it's time to take Phil's dad's car off his trailer and onto ours, en route to resident car throttle mechanic Gareth. Right, so it is a few days later, and as you can see, the Celica is on the ramp, with a very unhappy looking Gareth. From the news that Gareth has told me, everything is going swimmingly. And when I say swimmingly, it's like you're drowning in shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a viscous vat of dog shit. Uh, yeah, I, I do moan a lot, but this car has really, really stretched me. It's, it's a massive pig. Anyone who's worked on this will probably agree. The only thing I'm glad about is that the dampers are actually KYB's original spec, but they are new. Ooh. So we're gonna leave those in. Perfect. However, all these arms, are on the best bit of, I mean, this is, that's really seized. So we've got a whole range of new arms here, all the way from Toyota. So we'll replace this entire lot. Most of the bushes on this suspension are either shot wiggly or shot not moving. So this is the original hub and CV, well, half shaft. Both gators are split. It's pissed up all their grease. This freight flexi is split. Yep. And you can't find anywhere that will replace it. Correct. But you have spoken to a man who can make it. Yep, but can't braze it onto this bracket. Oh, and Toyota, you guys are geniuses. This is the part I love most. It's when the sump is in the way of one of the suspension fixings. Which leaves us in a bit of a predicament. So I'm going to get on the blower. Can you sort me out a flexi? No? OK. Lunch? And then we'll have lunch <laughs> and then everything will be all right. So that's not coming out. Oh, for f sake. Gross. Right, so I've just put this uh, suspension together uh, and I need to get the whole caliper unit off. And just having a ch oh shit. Uh, Gareth, 
Yeah. You know how we said the flexi on the other side was in okay condition? Yeah. Guess what? It, it's not. My name is Split. Uh oh. But you can call me So this car was actually driven around with that, with suspension. Suspension that was really loose at the back, right yeah. Gareth? That's why it was knocking, because the bolts weren't done up. Gareth could actually undo them with his fingers. And yes, he's got very weird, like, claw-like hands, which are very strong. Oh. Oh. Could you hold my shaft, Alex? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. We've been here before. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Let's put on more copper grease. It's called paying it forward, I hear. It's when I do a nice deed, and then the next person who comes along thinks, wow, what a hero. Great guy. The front suspension is done. Just before we go home, uh, we should look at draining all the fluids out of the car so we can have a fresh start in the morning. Yes. So. Things are looking good, except for the flexies, which are looking really shit. Because no one's replied. No, nope. exactly. Apart from that, everything's going swimmingly. And again, when I say swimmingly, we're swimming in a whole vat of shit. Precisely. You normally, when you, when you crack open a sunplug, you're like, it's quite brown. But this is black. This is like, this is diesel black. Go on, go on, go on, no, go on, no, go on, no, go on, no, go on, go on, no, no, no. go on. It never makes the cut. You lick that, I'll lick this. Okay. okay. One. Okay. Two. Three. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh. Oh, God, the fish is not stuck to my phone. <laughs> Right, it is the next day, day, I don't know, day 100? I lose track of time. Yeah, yeah one of those days. Um, we are currently cleaning up the hubs so we can refit these discs. There's nothing wrong with them, so waste not, want not. And then I think after we've got all the brakes on, calipers on, and we're happy with that, then we will start filling the car with fluids. Yes. Brand new pads. Got some EBC yellow stuff that we're going to bosh on. Uh, there's a slightly different sequence to these calipers. These are four pots. We pull out this pin, pull that out, and then we should be able to drive these stakes out uh, the back of the caliper. And that should, you can see there, that actually holds these pads in. And we should be able to pop those out the back and then push the pads forward. And that'll release them up a treat. And then we can bosh the new ones inside. Easy. All right, man. Cheers, buddy. Bye bye. Bye. That's exciting. Yeah? Tomorrow? Can't do it. No. Uh, uh, yeah. Before 1 pm tomorrow for the flexies. That's awesome. With yet another day drawing to a close, we reintroduce fresh fluids to ensure that this 90s JDM weapon runs just right. Oh God, I just had a really big chili con carne. <laughs> it's so full. Is it bubbling up in your throat? <sighs> Both ends. So the Flexi that we're after has finally arrived. Genuine Lexus Toyota part. So I'll pull that out. So we will take off this banjo connector we will loosen this bracket from the bottom of the strut and we will also take out this male part of this union and then pretty much reverse of that, sticking this brand new one in. That's pissing happened. 
and that's on the bottom of the goddamn caliper. <laughs> Yeah, that was the yeah. other one. I just spoke to Fensport and he politely laughed at me. Rarer than hen's teeth, apparently, to get rear calipers. They looked for six months for a pair for themselves. So we need to rebuild these. But apart from that, um, the brakes uh, rebuild is going really well. Swimmingly. Swimming in shit again. That's all we seem to be doing. <laughs> Okay, so you join us a few days later. We've actually had a weekend not yeah. working on this car, which is nice. Uh, it is Wednesday, and we're back in the workshop with some new parts, with, uh, with rebuild kits for all of the calipers. Because, Gareth, do you want to explain what happened on Friday evening? Yeah, so Friday evening, we decided to pack up camp, mainly because this was binding. So this caliper here, uh, you can see all the corrosion on there. So when we put the new disc in and the new pads in, it was just binding inside and the wheel was actually not moving at one point and skidding along on the grass outside. So we have new sliding pins yep. to go in because they were completely corroded. So owner of This Is Your Garage, Dick, actually spent a good few hours cutting the pins in the middle and then teasing them out. And then tomorrow we can actually get detailing, which I'm really looking forward to. Enough talking, let's get rebuilding. So normally you would do this while you've still got hydraulics on the car and you've not torn all the lines out. But we were too excited on Friday to see how badly damaged these uh, pistons are. Now we have no hydraulics and the calipers are off the car and we have to use mechanical means to try get these pistons out. Which is proving... Easy. Oh, <laughs> so that method works. Determined to win this race. Force and hammers always win. It's when I used to be big, when I used to be able to work out. I'd just do like a little pose. I can't do it anymore. And then it would just tear. Now I'm just as weak as a 12 year old boy. I hear they're quite weak. Well, no, you like looking at brakes and brake throttle. Why do anything else apart from brakes on brake throttle? You're welcome to brake throttle. really don't like petroleum type products. They tend to swell, which is never a good thing, unless you're swole. <laughs> Transition. So this is the predicament we find ourselves in, Rory. What? This one wiggles, this one wiggles, that side wiggles, but this side does not. So we got a trusty cigarette lighter, held it under there for about two minutes, and then freed it off with a shared ton of WD-40 and a spanner, and now it spins beautifully. Look at that, both of them. I'm actually really proud of that. Right, so the brakes are all installed, all refurbed and looking very lovely. All we need to do now is to uh, bleed the fluid through and then job well jobbed. Green light. Red light. Red light. Oh! Oh! Green light. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so another day is done um, in the bay here at This Is Your Garage, and I'm happy to say that uh, mechanically everything is sound. No, it's not. No, it's all gone, it's all gone tits up. Yeah. Uh, we've taken the car for a quick test drive. Um, it's not boosting right. It's just a bit f***ed at the moment, so yeah. something is inherently wrong with it. I mean, we've tried the pressure sensor for the turbo, uh, and we've tried it off another car, so it's not that, yeah. because it still had the same problem. Uh, we have a little smell of the uh, gas tank and it, it smells kind of like varnishy. Yeah. So we're thinking that the fuel in this car has been in there for quite a while. And the issue is 
that it's now running into the engine and it's getting progressively worse as it's drawing more of that crappy fuel into it. Indeed, so what we're going to do is tomorrow we're going to fill it up with some premium fuel yeah. and hope that it fixes. If not, then this car's going on the f***ing scrapyard because we're done with it. Yeah, I'm done. Upside down into a skip. Indeed. That's it goes. Uh, but anyway, we're going to try that in the morning and then after that, give it the full G on treatment. Oh yeah, we'll see you then. Oh, oh it smells bad. Yeah? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> We've been here before. Oh, oh Are you gonna do this? No, you're, you're so I'm close. I'm not doing you're this. You're so close though. I've been here. Yeah, so we all have. But as soon as you, there we go. Doesn't take a lot of convincing. <laughs> Come on, girl. Oh, oh, good work, mate. Oh, mate, I don't need a drink of water. Oh, good work. Oh. That was excellent. <laughs> oh, okay. Why am I swallowing the water? with the fuel. Oh, Jerry Springer. No. Oh. Trisha. No. Oh, so Dom is 16? Yes. So I'm just trying to find things of my youth that I think Dom will not know. Um, Pop Tarts, you don't know. Uh, Shawshank Redemption, you ever watched that movie? No, I've heard of it. The Crystal Maze? No. Fort, what, Fort, Boyard? Fort Boyard? No. So you don't know Melinda Messenger? Oh, Christ. Anyway, with fresh fuel now dumped in, it's time to cross all our fingers and hope that this has fixed the savage engine hesitation. Not happy. No, it's not happy. Not happy. Plugs, fuel filter, next on the list. But before any of that, let's clean him up. Which is why we've got Steve. Hello. From Gion, uh, helping out again. Not helping out, actually just being our kind of father. You're a parental figure here yep. when it comes to cleaning cars. Guidance. We've got the Celica GT4 here. It's quite grubby, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, I think just where it's been sat for so long, you know, it's just all the nooks and crannies that have just got to build up of dirt. But we've got everything here with the, the Geon products where we can sort it out. We're going to start with the wheels, aren't we? Because that's the first step. I learned that from last week's video. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to clean it, decontaminate it, interior, polish with a DA. Get wax. some protection on oh, it. I'm so excited. And then we can finally give the car back. Should we crack on? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Okay, so the wheels are looking a lot better. Uh, now we'll need to rinse the car with Gunny, which I'm going to entrust Gareth with. And then we're going to use bug and grime just to remove some bug and grime. It just starts to break down all the, uh, all the sort of heavily soiled dirt. Of which there is a lot on here. Yeah. Okay, right, lock and load. <laughs> I thought you were going to fire it. <laughs> uh, Gareth, remember what I said about oh, unframed yeah, glass? Yeah. So, don't forget the door jams. Go around there, good thing for those, APC. So just spray it on, work it out with a brush. So let's finish the wheels. So another coating of that, and then we can use our brushes and wash them it. Get really behind the spokes. Just really give them a real good thorough clean. And proper clean them up. Yeah. Now, Gion obviously does have tyre cleaner as well, but we don't need to worry about that because we have put on a brand new set of Pirellis. What we do need to worry about, though, is getting behind these spokes and getting all of this grime that's built up over the years. Now it's my favourite part, which is snow foaming. Go away. Everyone stand back. Look how much foam there is, just to give you an example. Oh, look. If you put your face... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, we need to rinse this mother <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my Lord. Wash it real good. Do you sing that to yourself? Oh, all the time. It's either that or, you know, car wash. Sing that to myself quite a lot. 
you want to sing it with me now? Not really. We have a new wash mitt. We do. And I, and so you clean with this one. Yeah. And then you go do over a final with this wipe one with that to see if you've missed any bits. But I don't miss bits. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Should we test that? Oh yeah. No, let's not test that. Okay, so now it's time to actually touch the car um, with the mitts and give it a proper bathe. And we're using Gion's bathe. So shall we work our way around? Yep. Clean Top it up, bottom. rinse it, dry it, and then we'll bring it inside for a proper detail. Ready? <gasps> Go team! <laughs> There's a private Gion group. So I'm just gonna say, look at these Is jokers. Is there actually a private Gion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I join? No. Oh. It's for it's like, certified detailers only. I think we're pretty certified. We're certified ballers. <laughs> Have you been working top down? Uh, no, bottom up. That's how uh, our certified detailers do it. I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> See ya. Steve, you want a hug? <laughs> Help me. Really? I bet Steve does that all the time. Oh, great. That's just what I want. Well, I need it taken away from me. That's now contaminated, isn't it? Good Fully. You, the last thing you said to me when we left here, when it was freezing cold, is I won't be here next time. Oh, yeah. And that's literally the only reason I turned up. Oh. That's actually quite funny because we asked for someone else from Dion to help us. <laughs> so every, everyone's upset. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now uh, comes the fun part. We're not going to teach you how to suck eggs because we all know from last week's episode uh, how this goes down. But just a quick reminder, what I'm going to do is put some of the polishing compound. Was yep. it called polishing compound? Yep. I'm going to prime my pad. You've got to remember boy. to prime your pad. So if you don't mind, just prime my pad. And then once that's done, once it's all worked into the pad, uh, then I'm going to give it a few dabs and then just go over the area on the car. Make sure that you have the pad in contact with the paintwork before you start. Otherwise it will go everywhere. I've made that mistake before. But no more, because we're now like, we're going into a business together. We're gonna call, we're gonna call ourselves Alex and Steve's detailing desires. Right, so most of the front of the car is done, um, and annoyingly, we found a little spot here on the wing. It looks like super glue residue, so maybe at some point, some of these rubbers have been glued back and there's a bit of uh, overspill. So Steve has gone to the car, he's gonna get some uh, Gion compound and he's gonna use a bit more of a harsh pad. This what happens when you get a pro on it. Unbelievable. I thought we were. <laughs> no, you thought wrong. So I gotta, gotta get that. Hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> With the front of the car now treated to Gion's finest, Gareth can now jump back under the bonnet to try one last fix to get the engine running right. Speaking to Dick, he's got an MR2 with a similar engine in it, uh, turboed, and he reckons it may be the spark plugs. So we're gonna try that next. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the back of the car. So we're just going to give the exhaust tailpipe a bit of a, a going over. So it's got quite a big build up of carbon. So a really good product for this from Gion. Metal polish, a bit of wire wool. Let's see what we can do. So plugs are in. We're just going to put this cack back on. Uh, Alex is in charge of looking for another bolt, which he's having an awesome time with. Um, and then once he's found that, I'll pop those in and we can go out for our first test drive and fingers crossed, this has done it and this thing runs perfectly. We've only got to done it. Yeah. 
And Fixed. Unfortunately, I had a, a bet with Dick and I lost, so I owe him some ale. <laughs> <laughs> I will get you your beer. Don't you worry, Dick. F it's not very often I lose a bet. Anyway, with the engine running well, it's back to work, vacuuming the interior and hitting the exterior with Gion Prep to eliminate oily residues. After that, it's time to protect the rejuvenated paintwork. You're going to entrust me with some ceramic coat. Yes. AKA can coat. It's a really easy to apply ceramic coat. So basically spray onto one cloth, wipe onto the panel, buff off with another. Job done. It's okay. that simple, hence why I'm giving you the task of doing it. But you're not giving Gareth the task, are you? Yeah, well... <laughs> last piece of the puzzle, Steve, is just to give the interior a bit of loving. You've given it a good vacuum out. Yeah. What are we going to do now? We've got some uh, Q2M fabric cleaner. Yes, indeed. So basically, you're just going to spray some of that onto uh, a brush, work it in until like it foams up a bit, and we can take any excess off with a cloth. <laughs> All right, so I'm very happy to say that our final day in the bay with the GT4 is done. It's been a bit of a mission to get the car A fixed, but today uh, we've done a right number, making it look a lot better than when we got it. Steve, how are you feeling? Happy. Yeah? Yeah. Happy to be away from us or happy that no, you've done no, a good I job? No, no, I just think with the results we've got in the car, yeah. I think considering we've just had a day to do it, we've done really, really well. Indeed, yeah. So a uh, massive thank you again to Steve from Gion. For, uh, for doing quite a lot of work and also being quite patient. Yeah. Let's have a proper look at the car in the light. Okay, so it's now Friday evening. I think it's about five o'clock. It's taken six, seven hours to drive here. We're currently at Phil's dad's neighbor's house. Uh, the GT4 is about to be unloaded. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive it down the road and surprise Phil's dad. Phil and his dad, Ray, are currently tinkering in the garage. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it'll put a smile on his face because from what I hear from Phil and, uh, and Dan, the neighbor, um, Ray is actually a really nice guy and he's one that likes to help people a lot and not really receive help. So hopefully he'll take this the right way and we can put a smile on his face. Anyway, let's get the trailer up in the air a little bit and the GT4 out. <laughs> Does that sound like a familiar noise to you at all? It does, right, yeah. There's a dump valve on this. Uh, you probably don't know me, but um, your son, Phil, uh, wrote in, told, told you a few porkies. We've, yeah. we've fixed up a few bits and pieces. In terms of the paintwork, I think we've done pretty well. We machine polished the whole thing with a dual action uh, polisher. The colour's come out really nice. It really has. It's, it's beautiful. It really is. Because it was quite, quite dull it was It was drab. Um, but it has come back to life now, definitely. It really has. I think we've definitely added some value to it as well. Uh, and one final thing as well, we've not only detailed it, we've also um, protected everything with a ceramic coat. The ceramic well. coat. Exactly, right. yeah. So it should protect wow. the car for many a month to come. Well, you've really, really, and these harsh really gone to town on it. We have gone to town on <laughs> it. You really yeah, have gone to have. town I'm, I'm taking it back. Right, go on, give it a bit of a... Oh. <laughs> I think yeah. that'll do. Yeah, I think <laughs> The only thing left is to hand Ray his Gion care package to ensure that this GT4 stays looking pristine. So Ray, sorry for um, springing this on you, but it's all your son's fault. <laughs> yes, uh, we've had a few minutes to kind of gather your thoughts. I thought, because there's a whole list of stuff we've done and I don't have it at the front of my brain. So I'll quickly talk you through what we've done. Uh, front suspension, all arms, front right knuckle due to wheel bearing, new outer CV, new inner and outer gaiters, new front caliper piston, seals, dust seals, new rear seals and dust seals, diff fluid, gearbox fluid, oil, oil filter, spark plugs, full front flexi hoses, uh, new tires as well, and a full 
detail, clean inside and out, um, thanks to Gion who made all of this possible. Phil tells me, and also your neighbour Dan, your neighbour Dan, Dan who is in on it. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, he tells me what a, what a lovely chap you are, and you're you're the type of person who likes to help people a lot but you kind of feel a bit weird when people give back to you. Yes, I don't find that easy. Yeah. I don't. So how are you feeling now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> suffering from shock. <laughs> <laughs> I do really, really appreciate it because awesome. I really like this car. Yeah. And I th it was looking for me as if it was a long way in the future and it looks like it probably would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> judging yeah. by what you've had to do to it. Yeah, so. when we pulled it apart, we also thought it was a long way in the future. <laughs> but we had, we had no choice but to crack on. <laughs> And also a massive thank you to all the Toyota specialists and Toyota GB for actually scrounging parts from all over the internet <laughs> and every corner of yeah. the UK to, uh, to find parts for us. It's been uh, a pleasure and a chore to work on, but we're very glad we've done it. And, um, and yeah, everyone well, seems to tell us what a lovely bloke you are. So well, really, really, if really we put a smile on your face and if yeah. it means that you can go out with your boys and enjoy yeah. this, then I yeah. think job well jobbed. Yeah. Well, thank you very, very much. No, no, you're very, very um, welcome. Um, so I think the only thing that's left uh, for me to say is thank you very much to uh, Gion for making all of this possible. Thank you to you for, for writing in. Yeah, yeah. And um, thank you, Ray, for being a good sport and not punching me. Because I was kind of thinking you'd be <laughs> no, upset that we no, did the work. No, 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 no. But no. Uh, job well jobbed, so happy days. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>